Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and welcome to week two of the uh, Survivor uh, podcast. I guess we'll call it that with uh, our resident expert or non-resident expert, uh, Brave Jayhawk. And as usual, we didn't talk about anything beforehand. Um, so let's first talk about, I guess it may as well, um, how uh, how wild a week one it was. And if there was every every game was up in the air. The if you don't have the, the ESPN like tracking of like win percentages and stuff like that, like if they did like a, a, a similar thing for like my survivor equity during yeah. like during like a one like 30 second span, like when all these guys are setting up to kick field goals and all this stuff was going on and, and all this stuff, it was it, it was it was just wild and um there was a lot of carnage and it was uh that's part of variance, man. I, I got to hand it to 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 Mike. Um, you know, we talked about all this stuff last week. I forget which of the picks, you know, came through and which didn't. We'll go over all that. But he made a really good point, which I acknowledged. And I didn't really think about it quite in this way. You know, we and we'll get into this. But when you rank teams by EV, yes, that's really important. But when it comes down to it, when, when you're in a week one the, the, the tiebreaker just has to be to pick just the least popular team, you know, because that's where all of the, all, there's so much variance, especially in week one, that, that you just want to avoid the most popular team, even if they, they're quote unquote good EV because of win percentage. And, and, and you, you had a perfect example of it all week. I mean, every single game was just totally up in the air and, and, and it was a, uh, and the 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 survivor gods rained down rather nicely on the fact that the, the the one team of all those that kind of made it was the least popular of them all, which was actually uh, uh, Mike's favorite pick of the week, and that being New Orleans, you know. And and look, not to say New Orleans was, was you know was a you know did any better than any of these other teams that were totally random to see who a, you know, New Orleans had literally a one percent chance to win with two minutes to go, just like everybody else did, you know. Um, but you know, sometimes you know you get. Listen, if you are going to get get fortunate, it's good to have it with the um, with the top uh, with you know with the lowest owned team. And just again, for me, from my memory to to recap, the two teams that actually made it through of like the whole group were actually Mike's like kind of two sort of like aggressive off the board plays. Well, not the New Orleans was tricky off the board, but New Orleans and the Washington play. I don't know. Well, we'll talk about what he actually what you actually did, but the Washington play was very aggressive, and and um, and, uh, and that made it through. And and, uh, and there was a lot of lot of damage done, and uh, it was uh, it was it was a lot of fun and a lot of stress at the same time. Uh, let me just kind of recap what kind of what I did. I actually did make. Uh, Again, we could all kick ourselves for not. Hey, why didn't I just go six New Orleans in Caserta, man? That life would have been easy, you know. Um, but I ended up only getting two, well, I got two through. I got the San Francisco. I got the New Orleans through. And at the one time, I feel upset that I didn't get more. At another another level, I'm glad I have any. Like still, still alive. What, so, what did you end up doing, Eric? On that, did you go two, I, two, I, two? I, I I went to New Orleans and some San Francisco and. Um, and I did play uh, Cincinnati. Cincinnati, that's right. Um, but uh, yeah, that's just kind of the way that worked out. And then, like a really weird dynamic also happened. Now, this is this is really messed up. So there 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 are a lot of pools that that allow uh, uh, entrants to buy in if they bust out Sunday, right? They they make Monday Monday night actually the last thing. And it's kind of oh yeah yeah uh -huh. kind of cruel in a way, you know. And and, and so. There's so there was a couple of pools I mean like that, and what ended up happening was that half the pool got knocked out on Sunday. Pretty much that half of the pool that was on tilt, but not even on tilt, they went in and played Denver on Monday and <laughs> just got more arm again. And the funny thing is, it's, it's a good EV play to make. You know what I mean? To buy in with with just Denver left to go, but I tell the Survivor gods were really were really in a bad mood, and so. It's funny. There was one. Uh, there's one pool. I, I I can't talk about one pool that you know we we both play in a lot. And we used to we used to play. It used to be much bigger. They have these nitrogen pools that we kind of I kind of got involved with in the two plus oh, community. Yeah. And and just because two plus two's gotten much smaller because of everything else, and nitrogen's smaller because of everything being legal, these pools are not as big as they were. But there was one pool I was in that that exact dynamic happened 
Like half the people got knocked out. They went, we, 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 we went to Denver and I already have a freaking sweat. There was one that had was 48 <clears throat> down to 12 in one week. <laughs> so, so already, I've already got to pay attention to a freaking nitrogen pool, which I didn't want to do, but it was the biggest buy and I did. So I have to now really, uh, I have to get in there. I happen to have had New Orleans in that. So it's, again, I just basically spread out all over the place and in the nitrogen pools. I happen to have had the, the biggest buy in to be the New Orleans one. So that kind of worked out. And then so uh, in, in 2019, there was a really interesting spot in the nitrogen pool. I, I'm not sure if you remember, but they had their, their largest buy in is, is one Bitcoin, at least at the time it was. Yeah. Um, I can't remember what the price of Bitcoin was at the time, but there weren't very many people in this pool. Let's just say it was 13. And a few of the bigger upsets pulled through on Sunday, wiping out most of the people in the pool. Only like nine of the uh, 12 made it through. But that's when they had two Monday Night Football games. So because uh, of all the dead money, a bunch of people jumped in and they picked <laughs> the opening favorite. Right. And they were losing. No, they're getting crushed. Actually, no, correct. correctly, they're getting crushed. So what started happening is more people started buying in and they were jumping in on the, the last game, which was the Raiders and some uh, somebody else. Uh, the Raiders were like five-point underdogs. I was, at, I was playing poker at the casino. And I, I was seeing this happen, and I'm like, I should, I should get in this and pick the Raiders because, right. the, like, 24 people had entered. I remember this very vividly. And but I was at the, I was in the poker game, and I, and I, I wasn't really thinking things through clearly enough. And oh man, I, I was so upset when the game closed because I looked at the pick distribution. Not one person picked the Raiders out of the 24 people that entered, and the EV you would have gained would have been uh i think forty thousand dollars um just by entering the pool because i, I, I tell you i still i still i think i have i was so upset about that I luckily still think and, I have and then the raiders and then the raiders scored a touchdown the opening drive and then i just left the casino they ended up losing but i could have i could have bought in and then sold off shares and i easily could have locked in ten thousand dollars um in bitcoin money and then uh ro rode the rest but you know Little intricacies that you got to look out yeah. for in these pools. Yeah. All right. So may as well. Let's let's. First of all, how did how'd you do in circuit? By the way. Uh so um, I do it with one partner, and then we sell shares to oh, okay. uh, four other people, uh, five percent each. Uh, my partner and I make the decisions, but we use uh, one of our friends as like a tiebreaker, and, and the others bring up discussions so in case we miss something. Oh God, God um, help you. <laughs> I, I wanted uh, I wanted to do. I was more in like team two, 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 Cincinnati, San Francisco and New Orleans. Uh -huh. uh, my partner wanted to go three, three. I really didn't care. So we asked Frank and we let Frank make the decision. He's and luckily he said three, three. So we went, uh, we went three, Sam, uh, we went three New Orleans and three Cincinnati. Nice. If we had done two, 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 we would only gotten two through. Nice. Excellent. Um, nice and then in, uh, in my, in, in one other $250, Cool I do with that same partner. We went uh we went six two two. So six New Orleans, two Cincinnati, Beautiful. two San Francisco. Nice. And then in uh the only other pool I'm doing, it's uh twenty five dollar with five uh double pick weeks. I went twelve Cincinnati, twelve New Orleans, eight Miami, and eight Washington. So nice. uh you had to earn, I, I you know you had to sweat it out, but the result was fantastic. I <laughs> when I was watching these games, I'm it's nuts. I, I had a bunch of people over, and I'm like, oh my god, if I if I get wiped out of everything, it's really gonna be annoying to do this yeah. podcast. Yeah, talked about that. We talked about that. <laughs> and I was like, come on, this is ridiculous. Exactly. Um, and of course, I you know, New Orleans, I turned that game off twice. Of course, um, the game was I, over. I have a, I, 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 have, I have a five T five TV setup, and it didn't make my top five. Uh, <laughs> games two separate times and they kept telling me you got to turn it back on i said no that game's over they said well, no, i don't watch these other ones like no you got to put it back on and, well, well i'll tell you yeah. the, the most ironic thing so my son he, he he reached out to me like at like three whatever time it was like towards the end of the game and he said oh so who'd you end up taking and i said uh and after new orleans uh, you know they, they 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 made the field goal i i reached out and i and i responded to mike i said uh, New Orleans pulled off a miracle, still sweating some of these, uh, some of these late, some of these overtimes or whatever it is. And then as I, as I, you know, hit send or whatever it is, I look and I see Atlanta's lining up for a freaking field goal. I'm like, what, what the hell happened? I didn't even realize the game was even over. And I still had to sweat another freaking 63 yard field goal, which with the great irony would be, would be 
Uh, nobody can hit a 20 yarder the whole day. And yet I, I was going to lose to a 63 yarder just after I say, I tell him I got at least. I and was, was and there was a penalty prior to that kick too. So oh. it shouldn't even happen to begin with. I That's think. Um, yeah. I, I pre-celebrated twice in my group chats for nice New, the New Orleans one. And then also, I mean, I assume Cincinnati was going to win when they only needed the extra of point. I mean, they, of they, course. they almost won the game five separate times. Of course. I, I wanted the, I, I was happy that they lost in the end. Right. Uh, Right. I want them to – if my team's going to knock me out, I want them to lose, not to Well, well the good thing, we were all rooting for the Giants, so that's good news. Everybody's – we were all – all the good players rooting for the Giants. So that's, 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 that's good. They, 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 they got lucky. They missed the – they had Houston miss uh, – Tennessee missed the field goal. Everybody was missing field goals the whole day. And then just totally to cap off the, the, the great special teams, uh, Armageddon, they send in freaking McManus on the road for a 64-yard field goal. I'm like – there's no way I'm going to lose this EV because the one terrible, this field goal is actually going to go. And I thought it was going to, I thought it made it. I thought it was, I thought it was going to be good too. And uh, I thought in the air, I thought it was good as well. It, it, it was good lengthwise by about a yard. But, yeah, uh, well, because he's the best, you know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah. uh, anyway, uh, so, so again, for those of you that are here for the first time, sorry about that. Uh, but uh, so again, so moving on, we're going to, uh, we're gonna what we're gonna do is I have survivor grid up here on the board. And again, what we do is we I want to go through the teams kind of ranked by EV. And again, just a quick summary. I do this literally every week. What you're looking for in survivor pool plays is the combination of teams with good EV, which is a total function of their win percentage as implied by Vegas, uh, as a function of their popularity, which is tracked by basically survivor grid, which which combines all the different pools, averages them, whatever you want. And then it comes up with this EV, and that's what we talk about EV. And then uh, we also consider lack of future value, meaning we want to play teams now that we're not going to want to play in the future. And you can combine those appropriately, and you get good kind of sur sur survivor plays. So we are going to go through kind of by EV here and just kind of just go through this. So um, and we're, what we're going to do is we're going to come up again with our you know top plays, you know, and again every pool is different. Your who you picked is different and all this stuff. And as usual, we're going to come up with a couple of cool dark throws maybe and see if you want to get aggressive and, uh, and we'll do that. So again, we have to remember, like we're going to remember there, there are two rules, right. In, in survivor pools. Number one is respect the Vegas odds. Presume that the Vegas odds represent an implied chance of winning and rule two, if you're thinking of not applying, if you're thinking of implying your own opinion on top of that, just see rule one. Okay, that's it. Nice and easy. Okay, um, so uh, I'm looking at Green Bay, San Fran, Buffalo, Denver. Let's cut off there for now, and then we'll get into the the, the plays underneath. Mm -hmm. so what do we think of? I guess we'll put all three of these together. What do you think of Green Bay, San Fran, and Buffalo? Uh, my my first comment is. I have a very hard time believing that these percentages will hold. Um, it's very hard for me to believe that especially San Francisco will be so lowly, uh, lowly picked. I don't know if that's the best word to use, but lowly. Um, the only thing I can think of is because they laid an egg in a monsoon and Seattle looked good offensively, that that's scaring people. Um, but I, I, this number should be a lot higher. Um, this is my, this would be my favorite pick, even if they were 20% picked, um, is San Francisco. Um, we, my partner, I kind of made this decision prior to week one and he came over this morning and we, we map each week and our map, you know, it changed a little bit whenever a variable, um, adjusts the variable this week being Dak Prescott being out six to eight weeks. Uh, yeah, um, but yeah. we like Tennessee a lot. I, I'm sorry, San Francisco a lot for uh, mapping purposes. EV aside, um, this is just an extra bonus that if their projection rate is this low, that's just extra. If, if they if their if their EV for us, if their EV was 0.95 um, at the current spread, we still would be taking San Francisco. So what? So what Mike was um, talking about again? This is for people that are here for the first time again. When he says for mapping purposes, what that is, it's kind of a, a, a derivative of the the future value thing that I described earlier. So what 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 is important to do in Survivor is to plan out not just each week, but.
but the entire season. And when he sees, says mapping, he, you know, this is what good players do. They figure out at the beginning or, you know, they tweak it along the way of how you're going to get to the end, not how you're going to get through week one, but how are you going to get to the end? So you create this kind of map of paths of which team you're going to use here. And if you use them here, you're not going to be able to use them here and this, that, and the other thing. So, you know, just to visualize this, you know, even if you don't put the whole thing together, you can just even eyeball and see that San Francisco is not exactly the, you know, they're, they're not exactly the nuts in any week. You know what I mean? You're looking at minus one, minus three, you have a minus seven here, but even if you, you, you could sort like uh, number six, you see there are other plays that you can make that are you know more likely to win, for example, in week number six. So you keep following along San Francisco and not until maybe week 16, do you see them as a big favorite? And even then they're kind of like four, four teams above them. So when he talks about mapping, he says, yeah, on the one hand, yes, they're a good play this week, you know, whatever, but also more to the point, we got other, we got other spots for other teams in, uh, in those weeks that, that San Francisco might be, might be, might be usable. Um, so that, that's, I didn't want to interrupt you, but again, we don't know exactly. No, and, 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 the ju- and the jump back in one of the, the main reasons my partner wanted to go no San Francisco in week one was to open up more spots for them in week two, right. assuming things held out. Now, the reason that's important is that if you don't have San when you where you don't have San Francisco available, you have to take somebody else. And since we like San Francisco so much prior to the season starting last week for week two, that helped dictate how much we were going to use them in week one. Um, we're going to in Circa. I'm pretty sure we're doing all three of our entries on San Francisco. Now, if we had gotten through. Um, if we if we had got if we gotten through with all six of our entries, we would not have done that. We would have, you know, if, if Cincinnati had lost, had won, we might we might go like four two or something like that, weighted towards San Francisco, and, and and bring in some other teams to limit our variance a little bit. But with l- the less entries we have left in an available pool, the more aggressive we want to be in 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 in, in, in particular weeks. Now, now to your point, by the way, about the San Francisco uh, popularity, um, certainly in in Circa, they're going to be much higher on because all these other teams, not to get too much into the individual pools, but all these other teams have have extra future value based on the particular rules of the uh, of the Circa pool. Like in the Circa pool, again, just to reiterate, I mean, you, they're they're there's Christmas week and Thanksgiving week where you're forced to pick mm-hmm. between a, a group of three or four teams and, and Green Bay and Buffalo and even to some degree Denver um, is, uh, is, 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 uh, and, are, and the, and the, and Rams. the Rams are especially um, the Rams as well. are all, are all usable, you know, out there Correct. So to maintain flexibility there, you know, most people I imagine are going to, or go to some degree to save, save some of that. So, so with San Francisco being the only team that's in this range that does not qualify for those types of special treatment, that automatically is going to move them up as well. You know, so I mean, I, I, no, I mean, I was having this discussion. No, I agree. I think it's so important earlier. though that we bring up. I think it's so important we bring up these intricacies for our specific pools to highlight the importance for all the listeners to make sure they look into the rules of their pool. Um, their pool might not have a Thanksgiving and Christmas week, but they might have another variable in play that will help dictate what their best pick or best picks are to choose from for each individual week. And just so you guys know, again, I would just tout this. Um, we, we set up on my, uh, on my true DFS site, the, um, um, a uh, customizable EV calculator, similar to what team rankings had or whatever where you could um whatchamacallit where you can uh uh calculate it based on what they have on on we scraped this from survivor grid or you could change the your 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 ownership here to see how it kind of plays out so if you're in a particular pool or for whatever reason you feel as though that you should you need to change some of these pick percentages you could do it and then kind of recalculate it and again every pool is different and, and i will say something else is like once once you get down to the the, the last bunch of your last few people and it's like pure end game strategy you know and that's 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 a lot of fun you know when you have like down to 10 people 
and you can literally tell almost to a certainty, you know, who of the other teams are, who the other guys are playing. But then if you're like in a really tough pool, like sometimes the, the two plus two pool, you could, you could like, you can just overthink and rethink like, okay, he thinks that I'm going to pick this because he's looking at the board. So I'm going to go this or something like that. And that, that you can becomes, take, yeah, you can take the chalk sometimes in those. Then, then it becomes sure. somewhat fun. Um, so, so, so yeah, I do agree that San Francisco is going to be a little more popular, maybe a lot more popular than, than we think, but I, I agree with you. I feel that for mapping purposes, I think that, that, that you could, you could, uh, you could overcome that. Um, uh, you know, like you said, I don't know about, if it was 0.95 EV, I might do it, but certainly if, you know, if you take some kind of a hit now, again, just for the beginners out there, you know, I presume that we'll get to Denver in a second, but when, I presume that green Bay and Buffalo are just completely out of play just because they're just so usable in many spots right, <laughs> during, for the rest. I, of the actually, I actually, I actually disagree. Okay. Um, Buffalo is, I have absolute last. I mean, there's, there's no, I couldn't come up with, you know, I, I, I first eyeball test these. Whoever the best teams are with the most dark green on the survivor grid, I need to come up with a really good reason to use them early. And if I am doing that, I'm probably just going all in across the board or at least for a specific pool. Because okay. even though they're 50% picked, you know, if you go all in with 100% of your picks, you can negate some of that, you know, that loss there. Because um, that means you're not going to use them later when they'll also be heavily picked. Buffalo is an absolute no play. Um, I disagree on Green Bay. We're, we're, we're each going to see things differently. I think Eric looks more at EV. I look more – I'm more of a field player in the sense that I'm looking at the entire season out, uh, um, save the last two or three weeks, um, because that's when you have – you know, some real uncertainty how hard certain teams will be trying because of playoff and, and record considerations. I actually think Green, uh, Green Bay is is better than the Rams, Denver, and, cert and certainly Buffalo. But it really depends on what you're going to take in the weeks that you would like to have Buffalo. And I'm looking specifically at weeks five and six. If you don't have a plan for five and six that does not include Green Bay, then you should not be taking Green Bay in two. Um, but if you have other thoughts, then you can use Green Bay in two if, if, as, as long as you feel that you're covered in, 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 those, in those other weeks. So when you say you disagree, you think that Green Bay is playable? Too. I do. I, um, we, now, I will not be taking any of them. Um, I have a, surpri a surprise pick that we, aud we audibled out of Green Bay uh, to a different team that's, that hasn't even been mentioned yet. Oh, we'll get um, But uh, – I, I like using Green Bay has two clear great plays and they're and they're two and six. Um, but they have, I, think, that, I think I think there's more now though. No, oh, oh, oh yeah, week ten. So yeah. we, we, I, we 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 have that on there. So yeah. we have we have them down for preferably ten. But you know we're really going to eye that six to eight weeks for Dak Prescott. If he's not yeah. coming back, I will not be. We will not be using Green Bay in right. anything until week ten. Right. But luckily we have four more weeks to, because we're probably not going to use them until uh, five or six now. And then we can see the status of Dak Prescott, but th that's what makes it fun is we had on our, on our mapping spreadsheet, we had notes to use Dallas in weeks five and six, I believe for the circa pool, because we are not going to take them on Thanksgiving. We're just not going to do it. So they're a good team. You want to use them. So you got to use them before the game that you're not going to use them in anyway. Yep. After one week, well, we, we eliminate that completely. We're not taking them in those other weeks now. Um, and now there possibly might be a play on thanks, you know, on Thanksgiving, depending on Dak Prescott. So, um, but so, each week you got to change your plan. So with respect to, um, to, to Denver. Okay. Um, the thing about Denver is, is you have to, I mean, the most important thing about Denver is what you think of, of them in week seven, right? So, so, so week seven, they are, you know, look, they're, they're one of the top plays on the board, right? Uh, they're, they're home against the Jets. They're going to be a 10 point favorite. Um, and between this week and that week, I'm pretty sure that those are the only two times you have a chance to use them. Um, and if you don't use them, I mean, you don't ever have to use them if you can get away with it. Um, 
And again, this also depends on whether you're single picks, double picks. Remember, your double pick pools, you have to use like 24 teams. You know what I mean? Like if you're in you're in single pick pools, you only have to use 18. But I think Denver, I think you can play them this week if, like you said, if you're fully, you know, for no other reason, just to get you off of their chalk in week seven, which I think, I think between them and 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 Cincy, I think you're gonna see some pretty pretty big chalk, unless we talk about Vegas, which which is gonna bring up another discussion. Um but uh, so I think Denver is, is, is it's really not my kind of play. Um, so I don't know if I'm going to play them, but I, but, but listen, they, they do have good EV. There is only one other time you can use them. And I think that if you don't use them here, um, so you could probably use them in, in seven, but the other week that you have to think about Denver is week eight. So week eight is probably the t- one, if not the toughest week, at least one of them on the whole board and if you just eyeball week eight you have well first of all well uh, well india indianapolis nobody used because they're all dead because of the ties um but if you look at it no one's a seven point favorite and dallas is you forget about it i mean they're not going to be a seven point favorite yeah. you know at that point so they're gone um the, the the real chalk in that week is probably at the end depending on what they do in the next week it could philly couldn't end up being like a nine point favorite in that game you know, coming, coming off a buy, you know how that goes, you know, um, yeah. so they can end up being big, big and popular and no one's going to, depends on how much they get burned in week four, depending, you know, to, will to determine what their available abilities in week eight. But nonetheless, I think Denver is probably really playable there. And it's like, it's, like I said, you know, going to violate rule one, as scary as it is, you know, the Denver going into, into, into London and all that. The fact is, is that there's very few options that week. And, uh, and so maybe Denver is something you should be saved. So that's why I'm probably not going to do it. Yeah, I, I agree with all your thoughts on Denver. Um, I have De- we have Denver slotted for eight in a in a best case scenario. Yeah. Um, with these teams that have multiple placings throughout the season, especially the latter mid up to the beginning of the season. We like to mark down the last time to use that team and then work backwards because with a team like Denver, even in a, in a standard pool picking 18 winners, assuming that you're playing to have to make it to the end of the season for your pool, even though it could end earlier, Denver's a team you're just going to have to use. And it, it, it'd be silly to get to week nine, their bye week, and like, oh, I didn't use Denver. And then you, it's fine if you get all the way to the end, but if you didn't use them, they're one of the better teams in the league in, in terms of yeah. having multiple and how many plays they have. So you're going to be giving up a lot of raw win percentage by not playing them. So we looked at week eight from the beginning and then worked backwards. Um, we, 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 we were trying to find a place for them in week one. Um, we, we thought they could – might. I'm actually going to use Denver in one of my other pools pretty heavily. Um, so I, even I don't want to be on just two teams. I want I want to have some diversity in the in the portfolio. But week eight's the last time, um, as it is right now. So you you got to find a place to use them. So Rams, I presume we're holding them for five, six, thirteen. You know everything else. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Rams is my week thirteen yeah. hold and and hope that that'll be a huge value play once it gets there. Um, yeah, the Rams, yeah, the Rams. Uh, I, but I think uh, when I looked at all these teams, I grouped in my power rankings, I put Buffalo at the absolute bottom. Um, and then I, I grouped Green Bay, Rams, and Denver. And by power rankings, I mean in uh, usability for week two. I grew Green Bay, the Rams, and Denver very, really in the same uh, group. Um, there's arguments for and against each of them, depending on what your strategy is. And I, you know, I, I put Green Bay as the best of the three, but you could easily come up with other reasons to like the Rams or, you know, even the Rams. I mean, the problem is they're going to be heavily picked, but there are, there are, there definitely are reasons to take those teams. You really can't go wrong with taking either of those three teams, as long as you are looking at what you're going to do in those other weeks where, the, where they're playable. So I have, um, okay, so this is, again, we'll do this like a chess video. So when we deal with with these EV teams that are like below one and that there's a decent drop off, okay? So what I want to do is, 
listen, if I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, again, I'll eat my hat. Like, like last, last week, you know, when we, we, we paused this, I said, who do you think the play under there is going to be? And I knew exactly where you were going because look, we've done this before. I mean, like you and I have done this a yeah. long time, even though we never got together. So for those of you who have been following along and you want to take a shot on who Mike's play is going to be under, under 1.0, right? Um, like, like I said, well, you know, like a chess video, you can pause the video, look, take a look at the board, right? And listen, by, I'm telling you, by week eight, you'll be able to figure out how all this works, okay? But maybe week two, you might not be able to get it, but I, you should be able to based on the stuff that we've talked about. So you can pause right now. And Eric, just, just jump in really quick. On Survivor Green, show them how you can cross out the rows and cross out the top uh, five. Top, cross out Green Bay, San Francisco, Buffalo, Denver, Rams. So what because when, 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 when you guys are mapping – for that week going forward, you should cross out the teams you've already used. It okay. gives you a much better visual of what you have available. Yep. And if you're not, if you're going to use a certain team, let's say you have the Rams plugged in for 13, cross them out because if you're saving them for 13, you should not even consider them when you're working on the weeks leading up until 13. It gives you a better look at what you have. And if you don't like the look of it, well, then uncheck the Rams and see if you have a better option using you know, the Rams earlier. So I'm like, I'm unfortunately not creative and I'm not great with marketing. So I don't know what to call this. I'd love to call it like, you know what? How about the, the Jayhawks brave play of the week? You know what I mean? Because it's the brave Jayhawk. <laughs> man, that's the best I, like I can do. The, the, I'm, I'm the, I like that. The, the, so, the brave so, play so, of the so, week. So where, so where are we going, Mike? Las Vegas. Yep. I love Las Vegas. Um, ironically, it was my first note that I made this morning before my partner came over. And we went over all this other stuff. And then he said, well, we got to talk about Las Vegas. And I'm like, oh, shoot. That was my first note. And then I, I pulled it out. And there it was right at the top. Um, Las Vegas is a fantastic pick. Um, very similar to my reasoning last week for um, Washington for, you know, big outlier picks, especially for ones with double pick weeks. Las Vegas is a team that they only have – Currently, one better game on their schedule. Week seven, hosting Houston. Assuming the spread's right, you know, they're going to be fairly – they're not going to be massively picked. There's a lot of choices that week. But if I'm not going to pick them there anyway, if that's going to be a, you know, a fade – I call it a fade game, then I need to look for other spots to take that team. Now, I could, you can conceivably get through this without taking a team like the Raiders. They're probably – they're certainly a top 20 team in the league. but they prop they don't have top they're not top 20 in playability for a survivor because of their schedule um especially relative to the strength of of their games versus all the other games played in each week this is really it um and it's a really sneaky pick and it says pick percentage one which this one i believe it's so far down the list so whether you whether people are sorting by the ev column the win percentage column or the pick percentage column they're, they might not even look that far down enough. Um, you know, in terms of the fishy stuff, they're playing against a so-called good team, which you know some people might not want to pick against a team like Arizona. Um, why would I want to pick a six-point favorite when there's all these tens on the board? Well, you've got to pick 18 winners anyway, and this is a really good way to clear up. This is, and this is where the EV is gained. You, you're sacrificing EV right now to – Create more EV in future weeks by by not using Green Bay, Buffalo, Denver, and the Rams, and Cincinnati specifically, because those teams have a lot of EV in several different weeks. And by taking Las Vegas now, whatever you're sacrificing, you will gain in EV, direct EV, whenever you take that other team later on instead of now. So, so basically, the idea, guys. I mean, if you want to try to look at these things, is that you know, if, if you're going to pick a team that's, 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 you know, that's giving up a lot of EV now, right? Remember I said for at the beginning, the thing you're looking for in, in survivor plays are either, or hopefully both, you know, good EV and a lack of future value. Fine. So, so if you're going to pick a team that doesn't necessarily match up with the, with the, with the, with the, with the needed EV, you want to look for these, for the lack of stars on the right side of the board. <laughs> you, you, you want to, you want to look for, for teams that are just 
just you're just not going to use. And and, and e- listen, even if if Houston was look so and and that that's so let's say that Vegas did not have anybody in week seven. Let's say that they were playing, you know, they were at somebody else, right? And that wasn't a good play. Then it would be a little more obvious, right? That you could say, okay, this is the last time I'm going to play Vegas, so I may as well use them now. But you have to understand how important it is what what Mike went through about week seven. So if you think of not playing Las Vegas now because, well, what's the big, I'll play them. I'll add a couple of different layers. I'll play them in week seven off a bye home against Houston when they really have no more future value, you know, when there's going to be the fourth, you know, and I, I'll probably use Denver this week, right. Or, or whatever. And I'll want to save Denver maybe to eight or maybe whatever. So um, I'll want, I'll use Vegas then, but what's important again is it's not a hundred percent clear as he was saying, but it's very possible that they get a decent amount of ownership. Okay. At the say the least look the chargers could be popular that week. Um, as obviously whoever still has Cincinnati, you know, Cincinnati, people could be could be to be jumping on the you know the anti Dallas train this week and play some Cincinnati this week so they can burn them there. There's always mm-hmm. always room for people to play anybody against the Jets, right? So they can be playing Cincinnati against the Jets. That's very possible. So maybe you know uh, maybe Vegas does become somewhat popular week seven. So to his point. You know, if you're not going to play a team, you have to you have to visualize this like seven weeks in advance. Like you'd say, okay, let's say we're a week game. Like, oh, who do I have here? Who I have Cleveland? They, you know, or whatever. There's some bad team, and they're this is the only time I'm going to use them. But if but if you fast forward to them, we're like, well, but they're going to be forty percent owned, so they're like the first team I'm going to toss. So if you think in advance that you're going to toss them anyway, you know, like don't use that that one spot as a reason to fade them now. You know, so. So, yes, you are certainly giving up uh, a decent amount of EV with respect, you know, playing Vegas. And I'm not saying that you should, you know, if you have three entries in Circa to go play Vegas as your three as your three entries, you know. But if you're certainly in in double pick pools, for example, um, or pools that have just a shitload of people in them, you know what I mean? You want to develop these kind of strong entries like that. Um I, th- I, you know, I completely agree. I mean, I, I, you know, I would even throw in like something even, even worse. I mean, like depending let, on let, let's, goal. let's go on seven for one more second. I want, I want to take it yeah. one step further. If you can yeah. sort by seven. Yep. So taking it one step further, if we're, if we're planning on fading Vegas anyway and taking them this week, even if you, you don't have to take them this week and still fade them in no. seven. But it if makes it easier gonna, when they're not available. <laughs> it, it, no, 100%. And, that, and, that's, and, that, and that actually is one of the reasons we take these picks sometimes so yeah. we can't audible off. You can't fight about um, it later. <laughs> correct. But if you know you're not going to take a team, as it is right now, Las Vegas is the fourth best team with you know by a reasonable amount. If you're not going to take Las Vegas there, you need to plan – who you're going to take and the, the the teams better than Las Vegas are Cincinnati, Denver and chargers. And this is where the mapping becomes very, very important. And this is what we looked at prior to week one. We knew we weren't going to take Las Vegas in seven. That was an app that, you know, as it is, things can change, but it was very unlikely we were going to do that. If that's the case, then we can't take Denver in week one. Right. Um, it, it made it easier that they were so heavily picked, but that was one of the reasons we didn't take Denver because we need them for seven um, or uh, Cincinnati. Now we took some Cincinnati, but we, you know, Cincinnati is a team that you would need for seven. The chargers is a, is going to be a really fun one over the next few weeks. I, I hope I'm in it, not yeah. hypothetically playing. But the Chargers is going to – some people are going to make some mistakes and they're, and they're going to leave themselves high and dry. And, and that's why everyone's going to be on Las Vegas in week seven is because they're going to use – they're only going to have Las Vegas and one other team around that quality. And they're just going to, you know, default, you know, more toward Las Vegas than that other team because it's their last spot. But you, if you're going to fade a team and you know it, you have to plan accordingly. So if I had taken Denver in uh, week one and, and they had won, 
And then I took the Chargers in week three, and they won. And then let's say I took uh, – uh, and let's say Cincinnati was going to be my um, week nine team or, or maybe my week seven team. You get to week seven, and, and your only choice is if you're going to use Cincinnati there instead of nine or you're left with a bunch of four- and five-point favorites um, where all you had to do was not take Denver in week one, and then you would have avoided this mess altogether. Um, the mistake, and they're, again, they're not really mistakes because I'm sure I, I know I'm not making highly optimized picks every week. I'm, I'm doing this more based on feel. I'm not running calculations. I'm always erring toward the side of future value and mapping out the way I want the season to go. So mm-hmm. going pr- previous to week one, I wanted Dallas to have a great season and I wanted everyone to take them on Thanksgiving and Circa and I wanted them to lose. So I was going to take Dallas before that. One week in, Dak Prescott's cuts out, strategy changes. Um, and Dallas won't play into that strategy because the variables are different. But you have, to, you have to do your mapping based on what the current situation of the league is, what the point spreads are, what the, the power rankings in terms of point spreads are, and map it all the way through and do not leave yourself high and dry when you get to a week where you have literally almost nothing to choose from. You know, I'm thinking about this at this, this Vegas thing. And, and so there's a pool I'm in that, that not only has doubles in week five, it's, it's completely, it's completely pornographic. And then they, it, there's doubles in week five and then starting week nine, it's doubles the rest of the season. Okay. It's just, mm, fun. well, there's only, there were 7,000 people in it. That's ridiculous. Um, and last week it was 5,000 people. It was dead at week 13. Yeah. <laughs> um, so like in a, in a situation like this, I look at week seven, right? And I see I see Vegas, right? I'm like, okay, am I not going to want to play them there? Okay, maybe, but but who am I going to play? Because, and this is the problem, is that the, the, the Chargers look like a team I might want to play instead. Um, but because they're going to be used somewhat in week three, they're going to be used somewhat in week four, whatever it is. But the problem is if, if I'm facing a pool with doubles in week nine, okay, which is coming up, I'm probably going to want to have it, to have the chargers as, as, a, as kind yeah, of an option yeah. over there. You know, you, you so, set me up for this. Perfect. When I'm in these double pick pools, you, I, I try to find a key week and, the one you're talking about right now is the for the format you're playing that is where you will gain the absolute most value i I would circle the chargers personally yeah never use them for any reason hope that hope the spreads hold hope they're incredible hope they're undefeated and they win weeks three four it doesn't matter they win or lose in three four seven i want them to win in three and four so everybody picks them at seven and then when you get to week nine, you just got to hope. In, in, in my, in my other team, what's going to lose? You get the Chargers, gonna, and no one has them left. What's going to happen? And we, in my week, in my double pick pool, I'm going to end up just eating the Cincinnati chalk in week seven. That's probably what I end up doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no it, problem. yeah, because you're going to realize yeah. all of your equity in week nine. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I will. Very, very unlikely. I'm in anything going into week nine. Yeah. I, I'm, pro- I'm, I'm going to be out. You know, almost for certain, very, very small, small, di- you know, single digit number percentage. I will be in in week nine in, in any one of my pools. Right. But if I get there um, with what I have mapped out, and again, right. I don't know if it's, you know, the optimal way to go. Um, I don't know that. But when you when you play it this aggressively, you're not ever going to be making any mistakes of being too conservative. I'd rather be. It's like in poker. Right? You'd rather be. M- you know, over aggressive uh, pre-flop than uh, than under aggressive and not giving yourself multiple chances to win the hand by raising or three betting. Um, I'm going to be raising and three betting all of my way to week nine. If I'm still there, I'm I'm going to be taking the Chargers in my single pick leagues, and that that's where I'm going to I'm going to have a really nice chance because whoever ever else is going to take, I won't be on them, and I'll, I'll get to advance. You know, I'll be taking Buffalo later. Um, I will be taking um, Kansas City later. I'll be taking, you know, Philadelphia either before or later. That's where I'm going to be looking to gain a lot of EV is, is in week nine uh, this year. I would, I, and, and so I will throw in one more. If you're, if you're really, if you're really 
Oh, we have two more teams to talk about. Yeah, if you're asking, if you really want to ask for trouble, um, you you could play the Giants. Um, you're asking for. <laughs> Not to mention that you could probably be a seven point favorite with the Cowboys the following week. We're um, going to talk about the Giants next week. Um, so I, yeah, I hate to bring up exactly. a team like the Giants one week in advance, but exactly that's what I just said. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, I mean, these are the teams I threw about. I'm probably not going to play. Let's do it. Giants talked about. I mean, I talked about like Washington and Detroit. I mean, like these. This is like the bottom of the barrel. But these, these, are, those are probably the only other teams I would even, even remotely look. In standard pools or double or double pick pools, we double we pick, double triple pick. You know, okay, whatever. I I will be taking. Uh, I assume I'm, I'm definitely going to be. I'm definitely taking Detroit because when you're when you're looking at these double pick pools that you're in look specifically at all the double pick weeks. And yeah. when you're, and when you're deciding between an outlier pick, look at all those weeks. And if that is a team that you're not going to want to take yeah. Detroit's a good example. Um, so they've got, well, they have a buy in week six. So there goes that they're at Dallas and seven. Well, I mean, you're not going to do that whether or not they have um, uh, Dak Prescott. Um my next, I've, so my, my, my double picks are 6, 12, 13. So they're, they host Buffalo, no way. Uh, Jacksonville in 13, okay, that's, that's a play. And then 16, 17, they're at Carolina and, and versus Chicago. Um, so, you know, there's a couple spots, especially at the end of the season when you don't have much left. But when you're deciding between outlier picks, look at, assuming you're in a really large pool that will go, you know, close to the distance, you know, barring some, you know, epic meltdown disasters like we had you know, a few years ago and everything ended in like what week 10 or 11 or 12. Um, that's, that, that's, that, those are what your tiebreakers should be. Um, yeah. Don't pick a team that you could, you know, make a case for maybe being able to use later. Take the team that's bad. Yeah. Um, you know, I used Miami and Washington last week. Miami has some spots, but in the double pick weeks for my pool, they really weren't a good team to save as it is right now. So I took them and I took Washington for, I'll be taking in my double picks ones. I'll be taking Las Vegas, you know, certainly, uh, and pro- probably Detroit. And, uh, what was the other one you mentioned? The giants giants. Mate. Yeah, no, the we'll giants we'll save them for four, for three. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. But we'll probably use them in three instead. All right. So let me just, well, summer, well, just what, what about since, what about Cincinnati and Cleveland for this week? We, we didn't discuss those. I think it's. Yeah. I didn't, well. I didn't really get into that. I mean, um, Cleveland, I just, I, I don't know. I mean, they're, 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 they're low EV and, and you could, and you could, you know, they'll be popular, but you could probably, you might end up being able to play them in week 13. Um, um, I don't know. Maybe a Cincinnati. Am I, am I mistaken? Is Cincinnati a better play than I give them credit for? Well, Cleveland. I, Cleveland. Mean, I, Cleveland I mean. Pick percentage aside, we would be talking about Cleveland if they had anything near the pick distribution. You know, pick percentage that the Ra- the Raiders have. Um, That's but true. It, it, it's completely out of question if it's ten percent versus one percent. Um, and and I'm not I'm not arguing against math here, but the uh, my eyes don't understand how it's possible that Las Vegas and Cleveland have the same EV when their win percentages are 3% different and the Cleveland's 10 times more pick. Now I know we're talking about like, you know, one versus 10%, but like that, that still feels odd that they have the same EV. I, that, that, yeah, that, when that, you play around, I, you'll, you'll get I, it. My when brain, you play around my with brain, the calculator, when you play around with the brain calculator enough, that. you'll see why. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, it's, it's accurate. Um, but, but no, I know it is, but that, that that's, just, it's like a weird trick on the brain. Yeah. I, I think Cincinnati there's, there's definitely, I won't be doing it because I, we're, I'm looking at Cincinnati for seven and nine. But um, if I, because I, I don't want to ever, you know, give off the impression that you know I'm make these are the these are the best picks. The, the 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 best picks are for you. You know what your strategy is and, and how and how you approach this. If you're going to get mad that you're going to lose on a certain type of team then don't do it. I mean, you know, this is for money, but in the end, this is for fun and you should do what you're comfortable doing. Just like in poker. I know I play hands incorrectly sometimes because even though I play, you know, yeah, over for profit, I'm, I'm, I play I'm, them, I'm, I play I'm, them the way I want to play. I'm actually a little meaner. So, so when, and what, I don't think there's a great example of it this week, but, but there's, there's, if there's a week where, where a team is obviously like a fish play, I'll, I'll tell people not that it's a fish play. Like I, oh, I, I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna tell. I, like, that I, I legit yeah. think Buffalo is like a fish play this week. 
like three. You know, well, I was gonna I was gonna get to that. I was gonna say the, the you do not take Buffalo this week, and do not take Cleveland. The, the, those those just don't make any sense to me, especially Buffalo. Um, San Francisco is my my favorite pick for my mapping. But I think as long as you're looking at the important weeks, the important being the other playable weeks for these teams, I think Green Bay, the Rams, and Denver are perfectly fine picks. Um, Las Vegas, I love for the, for the things already mentioned. And Cincinnati, I, I feel they're a save, but uh, they can certainly be, you know, they're certainly playable as well. I, I, it's one of those odd weeks where the only play I hate is Buffalo. I, 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 so, I, I absolutely hate it. Um, and, and Cleveland after that, but I would take Cleveland in a heartbeat uh, b- when choosing between that and Buffalo. So to sum up, I think we're kind of on the same page in general. Like we both think, I mean, I think it's safe to say we both think since San Francisco is the best play of the high EV teams. And we have varying degrees of, 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 of acceptance of Denver Rams and green Bay. Um, but they're all sort of in play, but you know, whatever. And Buffalo, neither of us are playing. Cincinnati, we're just kind of like iffy on. And the, we're both very much in agreement on Vegas being the best aggressive play of the board. Um, mm-hmm. And we both don't, don't like Cleveland at all. Um, and I guess that's that's the best way to that's the best way to summarize this. Um, but you, but and I and I and I I don't mind or like Green Bay and you and you don't correct. Right. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. I, I'd rather not play. I I I think that they have a little more. Um, I haven't I haven't fig I haven't figured out. Uh, how to not use them later yet. <laughs> yeah. Let's put it yeah, that way. Yeah. yeah you yeah, you have yeah. a better, better handle. on how to not use them later. Well, um, this is more for a uh, portfolio picks. If I, if I was single entering, I would never ever take green Bay. I, I would take Las Vegas over them, but you know, depending on how many entries I had, yeah, I, I, I might take a little bit less green Bay than I would Las Vegas, but I would take zero green Bay. If I, if, if I only had like two entries left, I, I just wouldn't do it. All right. Well, good luck, everybody. Um, Hopefully uh, uh, you guys uh, take this advice for what it is. It's not individual advice for each of you. It's hopefully you guys learn and get better. And uh, we'll get back to you next week. Good luck. See you guys next week. All right, dude.